This black wall was built by these young people, and it absorbs solar radiation and converts it into thermal energy to heat this room. Now I will show you how the black wall was built, and first they installed cement board sheets and made these holes. After this, the sheets were covered with black paint and transparent plastic. This is the thermal insulation on the inside of those sheets, and these are the connections of the room with those holes to provide such air movement when fans direct the air of the room here, where the air is heated by solar radiation and returns to the room. These young people hoped that the construction costs for this solar heating would be paid off within one year, and they even wanted to remove these trees whose shadows reduced the heat production of this black wall that is located here, near the border between the United States and Canada, in these forests of northern Minnesota with this climate during eight months of its heating season. We see that the winter is very cold, but the percentage of sunny hours is high, and it determines this heat production by that black wall with an area of 30 square meters. These kilowatt hours of thermal energy allow you to calculate for yourself the payback period of that black wall, which, according to those young people, cost them about $2,000. Unfortunately, they chose an inopportune type of solar heaters because this type does not work well in Minnesota's low ambient temperatures, and that is why it has such poor efficiency during the winter months when similar other types of solar air heaters work better. In addition, such a vertical position of solar heaters, without tilting, gives poor performance in the spring, although they can work well in more northern latitudes because their spring sun is lower. However, we have seen that this is a simple and cheap type of solar heaters, and its operation is based on the fact that solar radiation heats this black surface to 50 or 70 degrees Celsius, and the hot surface heats this air higher than 30 degrees, and this hot air goes into the room. But unfortunately this hot air will often overheat the room above 25 degrees, and therefore the thermal energy will be thrown out by opening windows or turning off those solar heaters fans, and this is my estimate of the amount of the energy throwing. We see that about half of this energy will heat the room, and the other half will be thrown away, and that is a problem that significantly worsens the payback period. That is why I am describing below how to solve that problem, how to return this energy throwing and use it to heat the room at night. I once made this system where the sun heated these black walls filled with air that circulated through this white box that had a few hundred bottles of regular water inside. It is obvious that the hot air passes through the bottles and transfers thermal energy to them, and the sun sometimes heated the water in the bottles to more than 50 degrees Celsius, and a similar box should be installed here. Those fans will take the air from the room and direct it through that black wall where the air is heated by solar radiation, and then the hot air goes through the bottles inside the box and so it heats up their water, and then the air comes back into the room. This was the first mode, which was to be used in November and March when 30 square meters of that black wall have to simultaneously heat the room during the daytime and increase the temperature of one ton of water in those bottles to 25 or 30 degrees at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. After that, this thermal energy will heat the room in the evening, for example, by circulating the room air through the box thanks to this additional fan. It is a small fan, several times smaller than those solar heaters fans, and it has a similar check valve and a timer, that will periodically turn on the fan in the evening or at night. The second mode assumes that during the sun the solar heaters fan circulate air only through the box, without connecting to the room, and so all the energy from the black wall will end up in the bottles and will heat one ton of their water to approximately 40 degrees at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That is why this mode heats the room only in the evening and at night, without heating during the daytime, and it is applied at the beginning and end of the heating season. The third mode is needed for the winter months and does not use that box of bottles, when the air circulation only flows between the black wall and the room, as these young people did. Interestingly, they could have not removed this old metal wall, but coated it with black paint, sealed the joints of the sheets and covered it with the same transparent sheets, but the hot air should circulate not here, but here, between the black sheets and this thermal insulation. The efficiency of this type of solar heaters is higher, especially in frosty weather, and it will increase the heat production and the evening water temperatures of those bottles. This is another possibility where the heat production is increased by the inclination of the black wall, and those bottles are placed here, behind this vertical metal sheet. 
In addition, my previous videos often describe how to radically increase the heat production using cheap mirrors or different types of help of a heat pump. Moreover, we understand that the heat from this black wall covers only a small percentage of the heating needs of the house, perhaps only 10 or 30 percent, and the remaining 70 or 90 percent should be covered by a traditional heating system, but my previous videos describe different types of heating where the sun covers 100 percent of the heating needs of a house.